Today we're going to deal with something called, well, we're going to be dealing with three things, but the first is called polynomial inequalities. And here is the polynomial inequality. You have x squared minus 17x plus 66. That's a quadratic, that's a quadratic function. And you're saying greater than, strictly greater than, zero. So we're going to look at what that means. And here's what it means. The x-axis is y equals zero. So when we're saying x squared minus 17 x plus 66 is greater than zero, what we're really saying is where is y equals x squared minus 17 x plus 66 above the line y equals zero. Okay, so here greater than means above. Well, let's look and see what part of the graph is above y equals zero, which is the x axis. Well, this part is above There's a circle there, and it's empty because we're not talking about on, we're talking about only above. And of course it goes on forever And as this goes up forever, it continues out to the right forever. And it continues out to the left forever. So when we say where, what we're saying is where on the X axis. Okay, so here's the question actually that's being asked by this simple, it looks simple, inequality. It's where on the x-axis is is f of x or y Okay, f of x or y can also be y equals x squared minus 17x plus 66 where is that above the line y equals zero? Question mark. Where on the x-axis? Well, this part of the x-axis and this part of the x-axis. So from negative infinity, to that x-intercept, and then from that x-intercept out to positive infinity. So all we need to find um, are the intercepts. So let's do that. And here's how you find the x-intercepts, because what you're really doing is you're finding the zeros of f of x where f of x equals x squared minus 17x plus 66. So find the zeros, find the real zeros.
That just means they're in the real number system, so they're on the x-axis. And you set that equal to zero. That's how you find it. OK, well, this is factorable. Uh, 66 equals 6 times 11 and negative 6 times negative 11. And negative 6 plus negative 11 is negative 17. So that's how I'm going to factor. I'll have an X and an X and a minus six and a minus 11. And then I set each factor equal to zero. X minus six equals zero. X minus 11 equals zero. Add six to both sides, I'll get X equals six. Add 11 to both sides, I'll get X equals 11. And so those are my two zeros, which means that the X intercepts are six zero and 11 zero. So now I know for sure This is six zero right here. Or six is the zero and this is 11. So now I can write my intervals. Negative infinity. To six. Unioned up with 11 to infinity. These are the parts of the x-axis where the graph is above the x-axis. Now, quite frankly, that's all you need to do. And it was pretty obvious what the x-intercepts are here. So you could have actually just, I'm sorry? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you could have really, if you like to live dangerously, you could have really skipped this part and just gone ahead and written the solution in one step. Not everybody knows how to use their graphing calculator. And so for those who do not, we're going to go through the old method that was used for, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years before there were graphing calculators. So here we go. We have all, we're looking at this and we don't have a graph to look at. So X squared minus 17X that. Where is it above the X axis? OK, the first step is always going to be to find the zeros. That's what they had to do in the Middle Ages, too. And so you would have gone through all of this and you would have come out with these answers. OK, so you would have drawn yourself 
and x-axis. So this would have been your step one. And then step two. Draw the x-axis and the zeros. And you know that six is to the left of 11. So this really is all step two and just kind of put it up here. Step two. All right, we'll have negative infinity over here and positive infinity over here. And notice that you now have three intervals. The two X intercepts or zeros have, have divided up the X axis into three intervals. This is a strict inequality, so you would not use any brackets. And then you would make yourself a table, so that would be step three. Okay, here's the table. You would write your intervals in each interval you would write a test point we always use test points when you've got inequalities it just they go together And then you're going to put the signs in each test point in a test point. And I'll explain that when we get there. You don't have to know that yet. Um, but we're going to have three intervals, so let's write them down. Negative infinity to the left side of six, the right side of six to the left side of 11, and the right side of 11 to positive infinity. Now we can actually write the table because these three inter, uh, intervals can act as our, you know, kind of where to put the dividers. Okay, so, so, um, I need to go here, so it, it's good to have this to look at. I need a test point that's inside this interval, not on the edge, but inside it somewhere. So I'm going to choose 10 as my test point. And then I'm going to choose a number in here between six and 11. How about, oh, that, uh, that should have been negative 10 because that's six, but how about making it zero? That would be great. Okay, let's get rid of that one. Okay. And we'll get rid of the one here. And zero is going to be our test point because that's positive six. Okay, now between six and 11, you could have seven, you could have eight. What sounds good? How about seven? Of course, it's closer to six, but don't worry about that. All that matters is it's inside. You could use 10. You know, you could use any number inside this interval. You could use some horrible fraction if you wanted to. And uh, let's see, um, um, how about, how about, I don't know, 20. 
20 is between 11 and infinity, so 20. Whoops, 20. And then I will write TP, so I know, I know for sure it's not an end point, it's a test point. Okay, so now I am going to find out what sign this causes this interval to have. And you'll see how it's done and what I mean by signs. So, let's see. We're going to find F0, F of 7, and F of 20. So, okay, now we've got F of X equals X squared minus 17 X plus 66. So this is going to be zero squared minus 17 times zero plus 66. So this sign is positive. And I'll put that up there, positive 66. And down here, seven, over here, seven. That'll be seven squared minus 17 times seven plus 66. Let's go here. Seven squared minus 17 times seven plus 66. I get negative four. So I'll have a negative. And then 20 squared minus 17 times 20 plus 66. So 20 squared minus 17 times 20 plus 66 is positive 126. Okay, so let's see, this was negative and this was positive. What am I looking for? Now I have to go back to the original inequality. I'm looking for greater than zero. So that means these are my intervals. So you see, even, even not using a graphing calculator, you don't even need to look at what you're dealing with to um, find the solutions to the inequality. So that would be step four. Okay, step four. Solutions. That's where this graph is above the x axis or it's the solution to this inequality. You can look at it either way. And that's how you do an inequality. Just working with the graphing calculator most of the time is the easy way, but you certainly don't need a graphing calculator because you can do step one, step two, step three, and step four and you will have it done. The next one is a little harder, 
Um, on a graphing calculator, you can see pretty clearly what the zeros are. One, two, four. And then you would look at this, which is a less than. So what we're saying is, if this is f of x, well, let's make it blue. If this is f of x equals, and we're saying less than zero, what we really mean is less than y equals zero, which is the x axis. So we could have even put a line in there. OK, and now looking for where below is because less than means below. Then what we would do is. Say OK. Now, this isn't below or on. There's no equals to bar there. So this is going to be open. And then this part of the graph is below the x-axis. And then this part of the graph, uh-uh-uh. No, because, there you go. Well, there goes the red, but I'm not gonna deal with it now here and here all right so this part since that's tilted out to the left going all the way from negative infinity into positive one and then from positive two to positive four, this part, both of those are below the x-axis. So the solution to your problem is going to be negative infinity to one, unioned up with two to four because this part is above the x-axis, that's not what you're looking for, and this part is above the x-axis, and that's not what you're looking for, and you're not looking for any point that is on the x-axis, or there would have been an equals to bar underneath. So, now you're done if you're using your calculator. If you're not using your calculator, this problem is particularly difficult because it's not factorable. If you try factoring this, x to the third minus 7x squared plus 14x minus 8 equals 0, which would be the way you would find the zeros. Then you would put parentheses around the first two terms, parentheses around the second two terms. You would pull out your GCF here, x squared times x minus seven, plus two is your only GCF here, seven x minus four. These don't match. Oh dear, they don't match. This is not factorable. And we can't put it in the quadratic formula because it's a cubic. What's more, the quadratic formula is only for quadratic trinomial, well, trinomials and below. This is a cubic and it's got four terms. So there just aren't enough letters in the quadratic formula. So now, we are up, up the stream, up the river, 
without a paddle. Except we do have a paddle because, I don't know, last week or the week before, the week before, we just got done studying the rational zeros theorem, the P over Q stuff. That is what we're going to have to do to this. So, This is P, this is Q. Luckily, there's a one here. So our P is going to be plus or minus the factors of eight, which are one, two, four, and eight. Because 1 times 8 is 8 and 2 times 4 is 8. So all of these are factors, integer factors of 8, and they're all plus or minus. And over here, the factors of Q are just going to be plus or minus 1. When you take all of these and put them over all of those, it ends up that our P over Q is going to be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four, and plus or minus eight, because they're over one. So now what we have to do is this. We have to look at a graph anyway, so you're gonna have to graph this anyway and find what you think is a good first guess for an x-intercept. And I would say to myself, well, it sure looks like one. It sure looks like this graph crosses at x equals one. So I'm going to do synthetic division with x equals one. OK, so we'll have one. And then I'll bring down the coefficients here. One, negative seven, 14, negative eight. Bring down the one. One times one is one. Negative seven plus one is negative six. Negative six times positive one is negative six. 14 plus negative six is eight. Eight times one is eight. Negative eight plus eight is zero. We have a zero remainder, and that means that x equals one is um, a zero of the function. OK, now if you haven't already noticed that it sure looks like two and four are zeros of the function two, that is their x-intercepts because they're real. Um, you now have, this was x to the third, x squared. So x squared minus six x plus eight. We can try to factor that and it is factorable, I think. Or we could use the quadratic formula if you're not good at factoring. So let's see, eight. Eight will factor into two times four or negative two times negative four and negative two plus negative four is negative six. So yes, this is factorable.
And okay, we've got x minus two equals zero, x minus four equals zero. To solve for x, I add two to both sides. Negative two plus two is zero. I'll be left with x on the left. Zero plus two on the right, I'll have x equals two. Same kind of things over here on the right. We've got x minus four equals zero. Add four, add four. Negative four plus four is zero, so I have x on the left side and zero plus four, which is four on the right side. So now I have my three x intercepts, which means I'll have four intervals. So step two, I draw an x-axis. And then I've got one, two, and four are my zeros. So here's one, here's two, here's four, and my intervals are going to be from negative infinity to the left side of one, the right side of one to the left side of two, the right side of two to the left side of four, and the right side of four to infinity. Okay, now, I mean, everything's pretty normal. Step three is gonna be making your table. Okay, so intervals. Um, 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 test points. And signs. So, uh, negative infinity to one. 1 to 2, 2 to 4, and 4 to infinity. And the test points now, 0 for sure over here. Oh, between 1 and 2, what a pain. Okay. 1.5. And between 2 and 4, 3. Forgot to write my TPs. So three, and from four to infinity, five is easy. Okay. So now we've got f of x equals x to the third minus 7x squared plus 14x minus 8. Okay, so f of 0, all of these 0 out, right? This is 0, 0, 0. Minus 8. So this is going to give me a negative eight. And then F of 
Okay, so calculator, there it is. Here we go. Is one point five parentheses closed to the third power? So carrot three come down minus seven parentheses one point five parentheses close squared, and then I don't have to come down if I push the x squared button plus 14 times 1.5 minus 8. Well, let me make sure this is absolutely right. Okay. Point 0.625, but it's positive. Um, and then three, F of three. Equals three to the third minus seven times three squared plus 14 times three minus eight equals. So three carat three come down minus seven times three squared plus 14 times three minus eight. So three to the third minus seven times three squared plus 14 times three minus eight equals negative two That'll be negative. And F of 5 equals 5 to the third minus 7 times 5 squared plus 14 times 5 minus 8 5 carat 3 come down minus seven times five squared plus 14 times five minus eight, 12, positive. So positive and ooh, ooh. Okay, so now it's just a matter of looking at step four. I don't even know what I'd call that. Check your intervals. Okay, check the original problem. Less than, I'm looking for negative. I'm so not used to looking for negative. But that's precisely what I got over here. I mean, negative does mean below the x axis. So, this and this. And it's strictly less than, so I don't have to worry about putting brackets. So my solution to this polynomial inequality is the intervals on the x-axis where the graph is below the x-axis. Negative infinity to one, unioned up with two to four. 